When I defeated the final boss in Shadow of the Ud Tree, I had come to accept that we wouldn't get any new lore about Godwin. So, you can imagine my surprise when I was exploring some random catacomb and I found this. Godwin is in the Elden Ring DLC, and we do get some new lore that lets us tell his story more completely. Now, we don't know too much about Godwin's life before the Night of the Black Knives. In the base game, it was widely assumed that Godwin was Godfrey's son, and that he was the favored child. And in the DLC, we do get a new piece of lore that bolsters this idea. The Amber Plus Three medallions tell us that the Ur Tree's old sap becomes Amber, treasured as the most precious of jewels in the Age of Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. These medallions, of the largest variety, were conferred to Godwin's inner circle of distinguished Golden Knights. Since the medallions were the biggest of their kind, this shows that Godwin's knights were highly honored during Godfrey's era. And I also think it further signifies the close relationship between Godwin and Godfrey. In a previous video, I argued that Godwin was infected with Deathblight before the Night of the Black Knives. I always thought it was odd that all of America's other children were born with some type of affliction, except for Godwin. Mikola was born with Eternal Youth, Melania had the Scarlet Rot, and Morgoth and Moog are both Omen. And this trend of cursed kids continues in the DLC. Mesmer was born with the Abyssal Serpent, and it's all but confirmed that Melina is Mesmer's younger sister. But for me, what really sealed the deal for this theory that Godwin was cursed is this line from the Empyrean Grand Dam. A curse upon the strumpet's progeny, upon Merrick's children, each and all. So if we accept the idea that each and every one of Merrick's kids was cursed, what would Godwin's curse be? To me, Deathblight makes the most sense. After all, when Fortisax tried to help Godwin, that's when the dragon became infested with Deathblight. We also don't get a good glimpse of Godwin's legs, so he may have been infected. And as we see from Roger, Deathblight proceeds slowly, which would have given the Golden Order time to try and find a cure. I also want to point out that Death Root is not the same thing as Death Blight. Death Root only dates back to Godwin's death. Deathblight, on the other hand, is much, much older. In the base game, Death birds can inflict death blight, while in the DLC, there is a divine beast, dancing lion, that can also inflict death blight. Death blight is also separate from destined death. Malakap's sword, his black blade, and the black knives don't inflict death blight. And even though Rani used a piece of the rune of death to carve her body, when you find it at the top of the divine tower in Leonia, there isn't any evidence of death blight, and for what it's worth, in the 1.0 version of the game, Fear's Mist was instead called Prince of Death's Blessing, which further connects Godwin to death blight. With all that in mind, and what we have in the game and the DLC, I think Godwin being born with death blight makes the most sense. The other major event in Godwin's life involved the War of the Ancient Dragons, when Landell was attacked by Gransax. A sword monument commemorates the routing of the Ancient Dragons, when Godwin the Golden fought to the last, earning the friendship of Dread Fortisax. Now we're not given a firm reason for why Gransax attacked, but I think he attacked shortly after Godfrey was exiled, and because Godfrey was exiled. Remember, Godfrey was Merica's most powerful champion. Godfrey was the one who conquered the Fire Giants and faced the Storm Lord, and now he's gone from the Lands Between. So Grand Sax may have sensed weakness in the Golden Order. And since this was the only time in historical record that Landell's walls have fallen, Grand Sax wasn't wrong. Plus, as even the weakest CIA analyst can tell you, transferring power can make a land vulnerable and create an opportune time to strike. What's more, the Stormcaller Church has multiple items connected to the Dragon Cult, but there's a statue of Radagon there. To me, that implies that Radagon was Elden Lord at the time, not Godfrey. Unlike his mom, who was always down for a bit of genocide, Godwin was magnanimous in victory. As we learn from multiple incantations, after Godwin defeated Fortisax, he befriended his fallen foe, an event that gave rise to the ancient Dragon Cult in the capital. I think of all the demigods, Godwin was the most noble, especially with the revelations that we get about Mikola. Now I had seen some theories that Godwin the Golden was actually a tyrant or some type of monster or degenerate, but that's not supported by the text and there's nothing in the DLC that supports that idea. In fact, I think the biggest piece of evidence against this notion comes from Rani herself. 
See, Vani doesn't have anything negative to say about Godwin. No, really. If Godwin was some type of tyrant or depraved monster, you would think the woman who plotted and conspired to kill him would have some dirt. I think it's very telling that even Godwin's biggest hater doesn't have anything bad to say about Godwin, and I think it makes it more tragic that he was the one to die. I'll also point out that Godwin helps us clarify the timeline for the DLC. We learn that the Land of Shadow was only split off after the Night of the Black Knives. As Rogier tells us, It happened during the golden age of the Erd Tree. Someone stole a fragment of the Rune of Death from Maleketh, the Black Blade, and on a bitter night, murdered Godwin the Golden. That was the first recorded death of a demigod in all history. Later, the Rune of Death spread across the lands between through the underground roots of the Great Tree, sprouting in the form of Death Root. So thanks to the Rune of Death, and Godwin being buried at the foot of the Erd Tree, Deathroot was able to spread throughout the root system. And according to the ashes for the Skeletal Bandit and the Militiamen, the Skelly Boys came into being after coming into contact with Deathroot. Since you can find those who live in death in the Land of Shadow, this means that the land was still connected to the rest of the lands between when Godwin got ganked. This is further supported by the two giant Godwin faces you can find in the catacombs, in the Lands of Shadow. Each of these faces is guarded by a Death Knight, who was once part of Godwin's personal guard, and according to the Death Knight armor set, these knights quested to find their transfigured master's cadaver surrogate for the coming age of the Duskborn, the name of the ending if you choose Fear's quest. From this description, we learn that he had a cadaver surrogate, and his knights were tasked with finding it, and I think the Godwin faces or that cadaver surrogate. As a side note, the only reference to a cadaver that I could find in the base game was cut content that confirmed Mikola was Saint Trina, and I have plenty to say about Mikola and Godwin later in this video. According to the descriptions for the Death Knight Twin Axes and Long Haft Axe, which were dropped by the Death Knights guarding the two Godwin faces, those knights were also the protector of the Prince of Death's cadaver surrogate. The reference to a surrogate is particularly interesting, since we do know that Fia was able to gestate a mending rune with Godwin's body. This mending rune will embed the principle of life within death into order. The Golden Order was created by confining destined death. Thus, this new order will be one of death restored. The Mending Rune is literally the child of Godwin and Fia, but the game also heavily implies that Godwin gets reincarnated into the Mending Rune. I will soon lay with Godwin, and it will surely stir within me the new life of the Golden Prince and first dead of the demigods as the rune of those who live in death. Please. Do one thing for me. Brandish this child, my rune, and take for yourself the throne. Stay the persecution of those who live in death by becoming our Elden Lord. I think these cadaver surrogates were so prized because they could be backups as another way to create the mending rune of the Death Prince. And as we learn from the Death Knight set, the Death Knights were once members of the ancient dragon cult, but out of their allegiance to Godwin, they are now questing to find his cadaver surrogate. I think this indicates that they are still taking orders from Godwin. Godwin is still alive, and he's not brain dead either. Godwin died in soul alone, but in the lands between, a person's mind is separate from their soul. I'm basing this on the D-Twins, who have two bodies and two minds but one single soul. If for some reason you're feeling truly maidenless and decide to attack Fia, Godwin will attack you with ancient death hexes. And this isn't from Fia since she says, Is that you, dear? In other words, Godwin is conscious and aware of what's happening around him since he is trying to protect the one he loves. He can also cast those spells since the Sullied Amber in the Prince of Death staff is said to have been part of the Prince of Death himself. And you do need a bit of mind to cast sorceries. When I found this out, I immediately thought of Locked In Syndrome, which can effectively paralyze people the person is still conscious of what's going on. Perhaps the most famous account of what it's like to live with that syndrome came from The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. This is an extraordinary autobiography by French editor Jean-Dominique Bobet, who suffered a stroke and woke up in a hospital bed, almost completely unable to move. 
However, he was still able to blink with his left eye. This became his way to communicate with the outside world. Using an alphabet with the letters listed by frequency of usage, a nurse, a speech therapist, was able to translate his blinks. As Jean Do himself described it, it was a simple enough system. You read off the alphabet, until with a blink of my eye, I stop you at the letter to be noted. The maneuver is repeated for the letters that follow, so that fairly soon you have whole words and then fragments of more or less intelligible sentences. Ultimately, Jean Do was able to write his entire memoir by blinking over 200,000 times. I'll also point out that Jean Do compared living with locked-in syndrome to being stuck in a diving bell or reduced to a jellyfish existence. So in addition to all of the Shinto and Greek mythology, this could offer another explanation for the aquatic illusions we see with Godwin. Returning to Elden Ring, I think a similar system could have worked with Godwin and his knights, but instead of blinking, Godwin would cast Rancor Call. In the base game, there was a bit of ambiguity if Godwin wanted the Age of the Duskborn or if he was just being used by Fia for her own ends. But thanks to the DLC, since Godwin's own personal god is trying to bring about this Age of the Duskborn, I think it's safe to say that Godwin wants this age as well. This is further backed up by the Death Knight Helm, which is adorned with a decayed golden wheel that represents their unbroken loyalty to Godwin, he who became Prince of Death. And to me, this decayed golden wheel looks a lot like the Mending Rune of the Death Prince, which you need to obtain the Age of the Duskborn. Now, I do think Godwin was Mikula's first choice of consort. I have two possible explanations for why Mikula may have rejected Godwin, and they're not mutually exclusive. The simplest answer could just be the fickleness of love. At the very top of the halo tree, we do find the prattling pate for my beloved, which tells us that expressions of love are the most fickle. And the fickleness of the gods was the fatal flaw that Goldmask identified. And with his brother now a giant merman fish dude, Mikula simping after instead of Godwin could be as simple as that. But there could also be a deeper ideological dimension at play. As we learn from the golden epitaph, this was a sword made to commemorate the death of Godwin the Golden, and contains the prayer of a young boy. O oh brother, Lord brother, please die a true death. And that young boy is Mikula, since the Ash of War has a halic tree for its sigil, that does massive amounts of damage to those who live in death. I think Godwin wanted to be killed and be freed from his state, but he had a change of mind, which may have put him at odds with Mikula. Godwin may have come to empathize with the plight of those who live in death, and upon learning about the persecution of those who live in death, he sought a way to save them by becoming their Prince of Death. Do you know of those who live in death? The very notion of life in death defies the Golden Order. These souls have committed no offense. They have every right to life, only they happen to touch upon a flaw in the Order. From his experience with Fortisax, we do know that he has an open mind. Godwin tolerates the ancient dragons. Not only that, he actually incorporated their beliefs and practices into the state religion, creating the ancient dragon cult. I'll also point out that the Death Knight set strengthens ancient dragon cult skills and spells. So these were once part of the ancient dragon cult, but they became the Death Knights out of their loyalty to Godwin, who is now the Prince of Death. Meanwhile, Mikula was still fanatically against those who live in death, even with his Halic Tree. Inside Elphael, you can find the Mikellan Knight Sword. The Ash of War for this sword is Sacred Blade, which is the same Ash of War for the sword used by the fanatical D-Twins, who are zealous hunters of those who live in death. While the Halic Tree was a sanctuary for many of those shunned by the Golden Order, including the Albanorix, the Misbegotten, and even the Kindred of Rot, one group that's conspicuously absent is those who live in death. To me, Mikula reminds me of someone who's usually very tolerant and accepting, but there's just that one outgroup they can't stand. Now you may have noticed I didn't really talk about the final boss. I actually have an entire video about why Mikula chose that guy as his promised consort. Thank you so much for watching, I'd love to know what Jens think.